In this lesson, we'll take a look at the compliance center. So let me uh, demonstrate this in fact. So here we're logged on to our Office 365 Admin Center. On the left navigation pane here, if I scroll down to the admin area, here's the admin section. And under admin section, I have my compliance center. Okay, so I can click on compliance and this will open up a new tab that brings up the compliance center. Now within the compliance center, I have options such as home, archiving, device management, e-discovery, retention, import, permission, and search. So the Office 365 Compliance Center contains several features and important features, in fact, that help us govern our data and services across Office 365. And this new management interface obviously represents the ever-evolving compliance offering, which will help meet legal, regulatory, and organizational requirements. And that's the benefit of cloud computing, because every time something changes, it's very easy to navigate and adapt to that environment. Unlike earlier, where you'd have to install new software, you had to upgrade, you had to worry about compatibility issues and so forth. With cloud computing, pretty much everything stays current, and you can stay current and on top of things, in fact. And within the legal industry, for example, and this is important. So the compliance center, so the compliance center here is an important aspect of our Office 365 environment. And here I can set up permissions for the compliance center, for example. I can secure and manage mobile devices that my users use, control which content in my organization should be retained, specify policies and archival strategies. I can also provide additional storage for my users. So let me go ahead and click on the archiving here. This is where I can establish or archive mailboxes. And this helps in taking control of messaging data by providing additional email storage for different users. I can either use Outlook or Outlook Web App. And again, the difference uh, between Outlook and Outlook Web App is that Outlook is your desktop software and Outlook web app is using the internet and browsing your email through any browser. And people can view messages in their archive mailboxes or move copy messages between primary and archive mailboxes. And after the archive mailbox is enabled, for example, messages older than two years are automatically moved to the archive mailbox by the default retention policy that's assigned to every mailbox in your organization. From a legal standpoint, this is a pretty important because you want to keep emails for users, right? You want to keep their emails for the last five years, for example, or depending upon the law or rules and regulations, you like to archive data and keep the data. And this is, again, the reason why you want to do this is because, for example, let's say your organization is involved in a lawsuit or a potential lawsuit and you like to establish in place hold for these mailboxes, this is where the strategy would be helpful. So again, we can archive mailboxes. Device management is mobile device management. We can create and apply various policies to protect our own data for the organization. And this is again important because users today are mobile. We all use mobile devices. In fact, almost 80% or 90% of my time is spent on mobile devices and I can and I use my mobile device for all sorts of things right for my, for my work for social media documents emails and so forth so my mobile device is very very important and this is exactly the place in the compliance center where we can either create and apply various policies for our users so for example a scenario of controlling access would be access corporate exchange mail using native mail client in Android or access documents using OneDrive for business apps in iPhone and other scenarios might work differently from your expectations so it depends on your own environment and your own policy that your organization sets or stipulates you can establish a mobile device management so in this instance a mobile device policy called iPhone for example has been created 
and on the right side I can see the name and description and this will configure the following settings on the devices so for example it will allow access and report violations if devices that have this policy applied are not compliant with the following settings and what are these settings require a password minimum password length is four characters require a data encryption on devices and prevent jailbroken or rooted devices from connecting okay so we can likewise create our own policy let me in fact demonstrate this let me click on the plus sign and click on the and this brings up the new device security policy I can enter a name and description so I'm going to say Android optionally I can give it a description also click next and here are all the settings move this up so my first setting is what requirements do you want to have on the devices so on all my Android devices within the organization that the users use I like the require a password option I like to prevent simple passwords I also would like the require an alphanumeric password so users who use the Android devices would be required to use an alphanumeric password which means the password will contain numbers and alphabets the password must include at least one character set or more the minimum password length is eight because I want to make make sure that they use strong passwords when they use their Android devices number of sign-in failures before devices wiped I can specify the attempts here lock device if they're inactive for many minutes password expiration in 30 days so every 30 days they'll be prompted to change their password remember password history to prevent reuse and this option is uh, helpful because if you check this box remember password history and prevent reuse every 30 days users will have to add a new password a different password they cannot reuse the same password okay store up to five previous passwords I can specify more they'd have to enter five different passwords every single 30 days and after five months so to speak they can re-enter one of the earlier passwords require data encryption on devices and then prevent jailbroken or rooted devices there are a couple of other options let me scroll down require managing email profile and this is required for selective wipe on iOS if a device doesn't meet this requirements above then allow access and report violation or block access and report violation so pretty powerful so once I create this policy all of these options that are selected will be implemented so if a device doesn't meet the requirements above then block access and report value so we are pretty strict on our policies as far as Android devices are concerned so click next what else do you want to configure require encrypted backup block cloud backup block document synchronization block photo synchronization screen capture video conferences on the device sending diagnostic data from devices this probably would like to block block access to application store yes because we don't want them to install any applications except the ones that we allow as part of the organizational policy require password when accessing application store block connections with removable storage or block Bluetooth connection so once you select certain additional options click next and then do you want to apply this policy now which means select one or more security groups that contain people you want to apply this policy to and these can be existing groups or you can create new ones specifically for this policy or no we'll save this policy but it won't be applied to any devices in your organization okay? so again depends on whether you like to enforce now or save it for later so we're going to say no for right now click next and here's the summary so the name is Android description and then the following settings that you selected are all displayed and click finish and our new policy is essentially in effect notice the status displays that's turning on in other words it is still configuring it's not going to be implemented right away it takes a few minutes depending on the office 365 environment itself because again this is cloud computing guys so we need to wait a little while and we'll come back to this and the status will say on 
All right, the next option is eDiscovery. This is where you can create the eDiscovery cases to identify, manage, and hold content in Exchange, SharePoint, and OneDrive for Business. So OneDrive for Business is similar to Dropbox. And we can use this page to create cases, manage existing cases, and close cases that we don't need anymore. To access the eDiscovery Center or a case, you have to be a site collection admin or a member of the owners group. And this is important because if you don't have the right permissions, you will not be able to create eDiscovery cases. So to create an eDiscovery case, let's click on plus sign. Let's say we're creating a new case here. Brings up the window which says site contents and a new SharePoint site, okay? Now, we are creating a new eDiscovery case, right? So we're gonna give it a title here. We're gonna say amazing discovery. I can specify a web address. Uh, let me, in fact, maximize this. So here's our title. We can give it a description, our web address, but default obviously is class2.sharepoint.com sites ediscovery, and I can say amazing discovery. Okay. So to specify a name. Select a language is English, enterprise ediscovery case, and this templates will create the ediscovery case. And users can create locations where they can preserve or export data. Okay, let me scroll down, the permissions. We can give permissions to access the new site to the same users who have access to the parent site, or you can give permissions to a unique set of users. So we're gonna say same users as parent site because if you're navigating from one site to another site, you retain those permissions. And just to note that if you select the use same permissions as parent site, one set of user permissions is shared by both sites. So you cannot change user permissions on your new site unless you are an admin of the parent site. And then last couple of options are navigation, display the site on quick links or quick launch of the parent site, which is yes. In other words, on my left navigation pane on the SharePoint site, I will see the amazing discovery link. And navigation inheritance, use the top link bar from the parent site, I'm gonna say yes as well. So let me scroll up before we create just to verify. So here's our title. And notice on the left navigation, I already have the HR discovery created. The amazing discovery is also going to be created as a site. And here's the website address. Let me scroll down, it's an e-discovery case. I've set the permissions, navigation and navigation inheritance. And we're ready to click create. This takes us to the amazing discovery page where I can specify or add holds or create queries to search. Now I'll cover this in the subsequent lesson. At this point, I just wanted to, to go through the e-discovery option within the compliance center, okay? So I'm gonna close this for now. So the next option is the retention here within the compliance center and retention simply helps us take control of the content within the organization. And we can do this by providing policies that let us help decide which content to delete and which content to keep, okay? So I can create retention policies, manage retention tags, policies for mailboxes, and my content as well. So for example, if I click on the plus sign, it brings up the preservation policy window. I can give it a name. I can say something like document, deletion, click next. We'll search for content in the locations we choose. I can say SharePoint Online and OneDrive for business sites or just mailboxes. Now, this depends on the amount of data that you have. Obviously, if you have hundreds and hundreds of users, then this may take a little while. But for right now, I'm just gonna select mailboxes so that I can demonstrate. So I'll click Next. It says, which mailboxes do you wish to include? I can click on the plus sign, and this will bring up all my users once again. I can specify Kathy, Greg, and then Mark, add them, click OK, and click Next. I can specify a few keywords, or leave this blank to search for all the content. I'm going to say search for all the content, click next. How long do you want to preserve the content? So for example, for content and email messages, Exchange will preserve the content when the message is received, okay? So it's indefinite, 10 years, seven years, one year, six months, or custom. So depending upon my own policy for my own organization, I can specify, let's say, seven years. Click next. 
simply review and confirm the preservation policy details and turn it on and start preserving content. Click finish. So it displays a warning message that says the policy change has been saved but deployment to SharePoint has been delayed by interim office 365 data center issue. Please check the policy distribution status for the final result of deployment. Okay, so this is no big deal. After a while, after the issue is resolved, the policy would be deployed. So click OK. And here it is, document deletion, the date and time. And then, of course, the status, which is, again, turning on. The details show that there are three mailboxes that we're preserving for seven years. So this way we can create several policies. Next is the import. So we can import data to the Office 365 by using the import service. So if we use, if we have data in other servers, for example, or it's stored somewhere else, or it's a physical hard drive that you receive from another office, we can import data into the organization. And by clicking on the go to import service, for example, it brings up the archiving import page where I can use the import service to transfer files. Okay, so I just wanted to demonstrate this so you know exactly that uh, the point here is that we can import data. So let's close this for now. And of course, our permissions in the compliance center. I talked about this earlier, but then again, each group, make sure you're part member of this group. If not, you would not be able to do certain e discovery tasks. You need to be a member of the compliance admin or the e discovery manager. And of course, search allows us to search and we can browse certain searches. We can create new searches as well. So the compliance center is a powerful area within the admin category of my Office 365 environment where I can manage regulatory or, or legal or organizational requirements. So I hope this helps. Let's move to our next lesson.